Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question I got from one of my subscribers. Usually I do only one video a day but because the student asked me to solve this problem urgently because tomorrow she has exam I'm doing my second video today. So here's a problem. Two inbred lines of beans were intercrossed in F1 generation. The variance in bean length was 2. The F1 was self topped in F2 and variance in bean length in F2 was 7. The broad heritability uh, or broad sense heritability of bean length in the F2 population will be and you have to choose a correct answer. First let me explain a little bit of theory what we call um, inbreed lines or we also sometimes call this pure lines. And here is the parent 1, here is the parent 2. And let's say, let's just take uh, three genes. For example, parent 1 for the gene A would be homozygous dominant, for the gene B would be homozygous dominant, and for the gene C would be uh, homozygous recessive. And as for the parent 2, because this is different in bread line, say for the gene A, this parent 2 can be homozygous recessive. For the gene B, it can be homozygous recessive. But for the gene C, it can be uh, homozygous dominant. So as you see, uh, here we have two different parents that represent two different inbred lines but uh, because this is inbred lines we would see that uh, for all genes if it is diploid organism we would see that both genes would be fixed so whether it would be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive if we would see heterozygous genotypes here then it's not going to be in bread line. And what's going to happen? When we cross them in F1 generation, which result, we would see the following combinations. For the gene A, parent 1 only can give dominant allele A. Parent 2 only can give recessive allele A. As for the gene B, parent 1 can give only dominant allele B. Parent Two only can give recessive allele B. As for the gene C, parent 1 only can give recessive allele and parent 2 only can give dominant allele. So what's going to happen? If for example this is going to be two plants, then all the progeny, the genotype would be identical. For example, we cross these two plants, we pollinate, say, this is male plant, this is female plant, and this plant produces thousands of uh, seeds. And genotype of all seeds is going to be identical. Because these two genotypes only can produce single genotype and their progeny in F1 generation. I forgot to put one here. So, we can say that uh, all F1 generation would be identical. And by the way, this is what happens with Indian farmers. I believe um, the student who asked me the question is from India. When they complain that American companies send them seeds, which they um, harvest, but cannot use for uh, F2 generation because what they get is F1 hybrids, we call this hybrids. And if you cross hybrid with itself, if we cross with another such plant, can you imagine how many combinations we can get? For example, uh, we can get dominant allele from this parent and dominant allele from this parent. We can get recessive allele from this parent and dominant allele from this parent. We can get 
uh, recessive allele from this parent and recessive from this. So can you imagine that every time here you have three combinations, three combinations, three combinations. Three multiplied by three would be nine multiplied by three. Even only with three genes we are going to get uh, 27 combinations. Imagine if a plant has uh, like 20 thousands of genes, how many combinations we may have. And in F2 generation, what going to happen? We are not going to get the same uh, plant of the F1 generation, this hybrid, but we are going to get dehybridization and um, of course Harvest would be unpredictable, not as predictable in F1 generation where every single plant has the same genotype and we can predict 100% the quality, the time when we can harvest these plants, the fruit size and so on. All the characteristics would be the same because all the plants would be genetically the same. Next step would be for you to memorize this formula where h squared, which stands for the broad sense heritability, equals to um, variance genetic divided by variance phenotypic. So this is all you need to know in order to solve this problem. So what we can say about F1 generation? We already know that all plants are identical, but we also know, according to our problem, that uh, in F1 generation, in F1 generation, variance in bean length was 2. So we still have here a variance. Why? Because there is variance in environment. That's why we have a variance of 2 here. Uh, we are not told uh, 2 centimeters or what it is, let's say 2 decimeters. So, uh, but again, genotype identical, what this variance can be attributed to only to variance environmental. So, uh, but in F2 generation, in F2 generation, variance and bean lens have been 7. And here we would have variance, which is going to be variance phenotypic, and this variance would consist of two components, variance genetic plus variance environmental. So again, take a look. Um, so in order to get F, Two generation, we just take two plants from F1 generation, and in F2 generation, we can get following um, genotypes. For example, for the gene A, we can get a homozygous dominant, we can get heterozygous genotype, and we can get homozygous recessive. For the gene B, we also can get three variants of the genotype. Uh, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and uh, homozygous recessive. For the gene C, again, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. So uh, many, many combinations possible. For example, uh, one plant can be homozygous dominant for the gene A, and homozygous recessive for the gene B, and homozygous recessive for the gene C. Another plant in F2 generation can be homo uh, sorry, heterozygous for the gene A, homozygous dominant for the gene B, and heterozygous for the gene C. With only three genes, as you see, we have uh, three multiplied by three multiplied by three, 27 different combinations of the genotypes in F2 generation. Now imagine that each plant have about 20,000 genes. So number of uh, combinations of the genotypes in F2 generation would be absolutely huge. Millions and billions of combinations. So every single plant would have different 
genotype. Compare with F1 generation where every single pl plant has the same genotype or with inbred parents who also have the same identical genotypes because these plants inbred. But F1 generation has identical genotypes because uh, not because this generation is inbred but because this generation is hybrid. But in F2 generation we would see that every single plant would have different genotype. So what this tell us? This tell us that uh, this variant which is 7 in F2 generation is due to two factors. First variants genetic, so variants genetic plus variants uh, environmental. And all this would give us uh, variants phenotypic. And in F1 generation all the variants we see, which is 2, is due to variants environmental. And variants genetic is absent. Here parent 2 and parent, uh, parent 1 and parent 2 also have uh, I think variants if we compare many many plants from each uh, representative uh, of um, lines but all the variants also would be only due to uh, variants environmental because the genotypes would be the same. So now we can find variants uh, environmental because we know that uh, oh, sorry variants genetic because we know that variants environmental is 2 so we can put 2 here and we know that variance phenotypic is 7 so now we know variance genetic which is going to be 5 and basically what we need to do now we just have to put these numbers in our formula so variance uh, broad sense heritability uh, would equal to variance genetic which is 5 divided by variance uh, phenotypic which is 7 and this would give us an answer 0 0.71 and this is of course rounded number and as you see this is answer D Again, why it is important to know this um, number, this number will tell us if we can use uh, certain uh, plants for uh, selection purpose. For example, you cannot use uh, none of these plants for selection purpose because all these plants inbred. If you take uh, many, many plants from this inbred line, you are not going to get any results you cannot select for certain traits because all the plants genetically the same. The same is true for parent 2 but uh, for F2 generation where uh, we see dehybridization where every single plant would be genetically different uh, we can use these plants for selection purpose. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write the comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.